Alrighty, so let's do 21.42. So this problem, a point in charge is placed at each corner of a square with a side length A. All charges have magnitude Q. Two of the charges are positive and two are negative. What is the direction of the net electric field at the center of the square due to the four charges and what is its magnitude in terms of Q and A? So this is going to be a straight up algebraic problem, which if you don't like doing algebraic stuff, then that sucks for you, but I prefer it personally. All right, so in our problem, we've got a positive charge here, we got a positive charge over here, we got a negative charge here, and a negative charge here. So they're at the corners of this cube. We want to know what the electric field is right smack dab in the middle. So, our charges are a distance A away from each other on all the sides because it's a square, which means the location of this point, we're calling P, for everybody is going to have a distance of A over 2, A over 2, depending which way you're coming at it from. So let's take a second and draw our expected electric fields. This is always the first thing you want to do because it helps you double check your answer and make sure that you can take advantage of symmetry and make your life a lot easier and save a lot of time. So here our positive charge, just like the last problem, if we have a positive charge, its electric field points radially outward, like so. So positive charge, we're heading over to point P. So if we draw our little line over to point P, our electric field is going to keep going that way. Same with this guy. We draw our little line out. He's going to be going this way. Now with our negative charges, they go radially inward. So if we draw our little line up, it's going to be going this way as well. So I'm just going to make this line extra fat. So these two are going to be exactly the same. So this charge and this charge, because they're the same magnitude and they're the same distance away, they're going to have this exact same electric field. It's going to have the same magnitude and it's going to have the same direction. So that's going to save us a lot of time. Same with this guy over here. If we draw our little distance over and point radially inward towards that charge, it's also going to double up this one. So in reality, what we're looking at, we have four charges that are contributing to this, but only two fields because this charge and this charge make this one extra strong and this one and this one make this one extra strong. So there are four separate fields here, but they're adding together to be in the same direction, if that makes sense. So I'm going to number these just to help us keep track. So we got one, two, three, and four. Now we're going to write some notes just so we don't forget. So charges one and three are going to have the same field because they're the same strength and they're the same distance away. And similarly, charges two and four are going to have the same field because they're the same value of charge and the same distance away. Now, you might be like, wait, they're not the same charge. One's plus, one's minus. That's true. But because of where they're located, the resulting field is going to be exactly the same. So putting a negative charge over here is exactly the same as putting a positive charge on the other side. You just flip it across the axis. Okay. So if we look at this, we can also make some more symmetry arguments. If we break this down into an X and Y, this one's pointing down into the right, this one's pointing down into the left. These guys have the same value of charge. They're all the same distance away. So that means the magnitude of this one is the same as the magnitude of this one. And this direction is going to be the same but opposite of this one. So these X components are going to cancel out. So all of our X components are going to cancel. 
which means we don't even have to worry about c computing those, and we can save ourselves some time. All x components cancel. So we, because I'm lazy, I don't like doing work if I don't have to. Okay, so one and three have the exact same field, two and four have the exact same field, their x components cancel, but their y components, if we check them out, they're all gonna be exactly the same. So all the y components, because they're the same charge and the same distance again, are equal. So this is really nice because now we only have to compute it once and just multiply by four and we're done. Look at all of that work we saved. So let's just look at charge number one because he's up here, he's chilling. He's the most convenient. He's number one, so we're gonna use him. So let's compute the electric field for number one. First thing we wanna do, what is our R vector? So if we look at this, we're heading over to point P. R vector is from the charge to the point that we care about. So in our X direction, we're gonna go A over two and in the y direction, we're gonna go negative a over two. So a over two i hat minus a over two j hat. You can also write this like so, depending on your preferred notation. I like the little squiggle bracket things because it's like, oh yeah, that's obviously a vector. Okay, so the magnitude of our r vector in that case it's going to be a over 2 to the squared plus minus a over 2 to the squared, like so. So this is going to be, give me a squared over 4 plus a squared over 4. So it gives me 2a squared over 4. Or root 2 over 2a. Now you're probably like, oh, that's a square. It has sine 45, cosine 45. Sine of 45 is root two over two, duh. Yeah, leave me alone. I like to do it the hard way. You can also do that, it's the exact same thing. Okay, sweet. So now our E field is gonna be KQ over R cubed, R vector, because I like doing it that way, but we'll do it the other way for you here in a sec. So our k, oh wait, where well, this is algebraic, never mind. All right, sweet, convenient. So we have k, q, r cubed is gonna be root two a over two cubed. Oh, this is ugly. And our r vector, now we said that the only part we care about is our y component, and our y component was minus a over two. So let's clean this up a little bit because it's gross. There's a lot of roots and junk. So we got a minus KQA on top. Down here we've got a two to the three halves because it's a square rooted. We've got an A cubed. We've got a two. And then we have this two down here with the cubed. So if it's on the bottom of the bottom, it's actually on the top. Blam. So we can cancel out one of these with U. Blah, blah. Cancel out one of these with U. Blah, blah. So minus 4 K Q over 2 to the 3 halves A squared. That's like square root of eight or something like that. You can probably simplify this more, but I'm lazy, so I'm not going to. Godspeed. Okay, but that's just for one of them. So if I want all of it, I'm gonna multiply by four. Make sense? So my total 
E field is going to be minus 4 times 4 kq over 2 to the 3 halves a squared or minus 16 kq over a squared we're going to say square root of 8 down here and simplify this out well, 16 squared. Oh, it's a lot, isn't it? Dang it. Eh, good enough. Alright. Kablam. Okay. The end. Just kidding, that's not the end. So that's the magnitude. The direction is minus J. Don't forget your direction. It's pointing straight down. Sum these two together, you get a big monstrosity that's like blah that way. E total. Cool.